Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents with God's Church of Love. You know, sometimes we get tired. We get sick and tired of being sick and tired. <laughs> we just like, I'm through, I'm up to here with it all. And we don't realize that that's just a normal human response to life and its challenges. So sometimes we have to be reminded by God. Thank God he's understanding because he will remind us over and over again. Don't be weary and well-doing, baby, for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. So I'm going to read scripture to you, and I want to encourage you to know that even though things may seem tiring, there and we hit that wall, what God is saying is he's He's on our side of the wall and he's on the other side of the wall and he can take you through it, baby. You don't have to climb over the wall. He can take you through the wall as if there's nothing there. So know that God is the one carrying you, no matter how tired you are, no matter how disgusted and frustrated you may be. No matter how many times you want to wash your hands of the human race and say, forget all y'all. God is saying, do not be weary in well-doing. All right. I'm going to read Galatians chapter six. And that is what I want you to hear in your ear, in your hearing right now. Mm, mm, mm. Let's see. Where are we? Galatians chapter six starting at verse 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting and let us not be weary in well-doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not hmm, mm, mm. as we have therefore verse 10 opportunity let us do good unto all men especially unto them who are of the household of faith and we're stopping there now i want to get the word done so we're going to go down because the Lord gave me these scriptures and I had no idea they had the exact same sentence in them. So I'm going to read it now. Second Thessalonians chapter three. <laughs> I love it. Mm. All right. We're going to go to chapter 16. I mean, verse 16. This is second Thessalonians chapter three verse 16 through 18. Now the Lord of peace himself give you peace always by all means. The Lord be with you all. Let me see if I'm at the right place. Ah, wrong place. Okay, let me go up a little higher. I knew that wasn't going in the right direction. We're going to yeah, we're going to verse 13. But ye, brethren, be not weary in well-doing. Verse 14, and if a man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man and have no company with him that he may be ashamed. Yet count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. Now, the Lord of peace himself give you peace always by all means. The Lord be with you all. Now, what I want to share with you is I know sometimes life can be a real pain in the tushy. Yeah, we know that. And there are people who can be a real pain in the tushy right along with life. And sometimes we want to wash our hands of them. We want to wipe the dust off of our feet. But we have to remember we are all a work in progress. Now, that doesn't mean you are to wear yourself out worrying about 
them and their offenses, worrying about why that one got upset with you, why this one doesn't like you. No, you don't go through that. You just say, okay, see ya, wouldn't want to be ya. Pray for them. Don't have any animosity, but keep on stepping. Now, what I want to say to you is no matter what types of people or what types of things or occasions or situations get on your last, your reserve nerve, remember God is in control. It's not the end. It's not a wash. There is hope for every single one of us. And God knows why he's doing what he's doing. He knows that he is working all things together for our good, for those who love God and who are called according to his purpose. Now, one of the things I learned years ago is that there are times when people get on our nerves and we can't figure them out. And we don't want to be bothered with them anymore because they're just not where we think they should be. Sometimes we have to remember that scripture that says, it's not my brother, it's not my sister, but it's me, Lord, standing in the need of prayer. So what happens? You will find that there will come friction, there will come problems, and what ends up happening? What God is trying to do with both parties involved, is give them a glimpse of what's happening inside of them, be it good or be it foul. Mm -hmm. I found that a lot of times the things in my life that get on my nerves the most are because of maybe one of three things, possibilities. One, I'm immature in that area. And I need to grow up because I'm acting like a child and I am having hissy fits over stuff that doesn't count. Number two, I am overloaded with emotional scars and I'm super sensitive. Mm -hmm. And super sensitive people can oftentimes be high strung. Everything's a big deal and that gets on my nerves and I can't take another day of that and I can't take another minute of you whatever the case is but these are people you can call them drama kings and drama queens baby everything is major drama and a lot of times God's trying to show us that by how we respond to the crisis of the day that's the comical part. We're looking at the crisis. We're looking at the people that are making our lives miserable. And God is trying to get us to look in the mirror at this is why you feel so miserable. It's not because of what they're doing. And it's not because of what's happening over there. It's because there's something in you that I want to deal with. And you keep turning a blind eye to it. So why don't you be still and know that I am God? And let me show you a thing or two. Let me walk you down memory lane and remind you where that offense came from, where that annoyance came from, where that aggravation came from, where that super sensitivity came from, where this overreaction syndrome that you have came from because you don't have to live your life like that that is not the abundant life that is your flesh and that's what i want to gouge out of you at the root because everything is drama everything is wrong with everybody else yeah you gotta think about this sometimes um, I'll share a little story. Let's talk about me. Because, see, I won't be offended telling my business. But some of y'all would be offended if I told your business. So we'll leave you out of it. Y'all can look at me cockeyed and say, mm-hmm, she's a mess. So that's fine. Because if it wasn't for God, oh, yeah, I'm a mess. All right, here we go. 
years ago in a dream that God gave me, that God orchestrated, that I had no clue. I thought of it as a nightmare when I woke up. But I learned through the years from experience the first thing to do coming out of a nasty, ugly dream is ask God why I had that dream in the first place. So I dreamt that I was walking up the walkway. See, I like to tell stories because you don't forget those as quickly. I'm walking up the walkway. And I'm a businesswoman in the dream, in the dream now. I'm a businesswoman, and I'm looking for a particular individual. So I see a man and a woman. The woman's down on the ground floor with me. I'm walking up the walkway, so she's outside. The man is upstairs looking over the terrace, and they're arguing back and forth. And it sounded silly, you know, a little lover's quarrel, whatever, a little spat. And I approached the lady and I said, excuse me, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but do you know a Mr. or Mrs. So-and-so? Well, she says, no, I don't, but he might. Now, as I'm approaching her, what I heard was, you act like you don't care about me. You see, my car won't start. I got to get to work. Why can't you just come down and jump my battery? You got jumper cables. You got a car. You got a battery. Is nothing for you to do. You're not doing anything now anyway. And his response is, I don't have time for you, woman. Now, the man had red hair, uh, a muscle shirt showing all his little arm and shoulder muscles. <clears throat> yeah, he looked like he thought he was God's gift to women. But anyway, and he had a big old earring in his ear. So everything was stereotypical in the dream because God was trying to get me to see something. All right. So... Huh. The woman says, uh, excuse me, uh, this lady needs help. And the man says, oh, I'll be right down. He wouldn't help the woman that he was busting the sheets with, but he's going to help a total stranger. Crazy, huh? Listen to this dream. So he comes downstairs. I'm making a point. Please stay with me on this. The man comes down and he says, yes, may I help you? And I said, um, I'm looking for Mr. This or Mr. That or Mrs. That, whatever the name was. And he says, oh, yeah, come on in. And he says, uh, unlock your door real quick. Now, she's trying to get to work. Her car won't start. And he won't jump her battery. But he tells her to open her door so we can go inside and get comfortable and talk about what I'm looking for. And I'm a stranger. But he doesn't have time to jump her battery. Think about it now. So here we come in and he tells me, have a seat. And he goes and plops in her recliner. And then says, a woman, get me a glass of ice water or whatever he told her to get it. And I'm looking at him like, you got nerve. And she, like an idiot, trots to the refrigerator and gets him a glass of ice water. I wanted to slap some sense into her. So she comes and she hands the man a drink and he's trying to help me figure out who these people are and where they might be, what apartment. And I'm looking at her and she's crying. She got tears coming down her eyes and she's, oh, Lord, why? I, be, I even bothered with him. And I said, why do you? <laughs> I mean, I couldn't hold it back. And she said, I love him. I wanted to slap her right there. All right. Okay. Okay. That's my human side. But I'm like, woman, can't you tell this man doesn't care about you? Can't you see it? So what happens? As I'm sharing with her about how uh, she needs to check out his actions. And then I said, I'm going to stay out of it from that point on. Because I'm a stranger. I don't know these folks. So I wake up out of the dream. Mm -hmm. And when I woke up out the dream, I was so upset with her for being so dumb and such a patsy for him that I, I'm complaining to the Lord. Lord, how can you let me even dream about somebody? That, that's annoying to deal with people that hard up and desperate. That's ridiculous. And 
I'm fussing, fussing, fussing. And guess what the Lord said? He literally spoke. He said, that, referring to the lady in the dream, that is you. Oh, I was insulted, y'all. How dare the Lord tell me I act that stupid? No way. Well, guess what? I was involved with a guy at the time. It was a little short fling. And the Lord was trying to show me, the man doesn't care for you. Look how desperate you're acting. You're at that man's beck and call. <laughs> like a little trained puppy waiting for you, a little pat on the head, a little rub on your belly. Wake up, smell the coffee. Love yourself enough not to bow to a man's disrespect like that. I was floored because I could see it once the Lord said it. And after I got over the insult, I could see he was telling the truth. I was acting like a desperate, sorry, hard up. Mm. Anyway, so what ended up happening was as time went on, it was about a week and I ended up, you know, breaking up with the guy. But it was such an eye opener. What the Lord showed me through that experience is there are a lot of things in life that annoy us to the core about other people, about situations, circumstances, on the job, at your workplace, at your church, dealing with the choir, dealing with the usher board, dealing with this auxiliary, all kind of stuff, dealing with the pastor, dealing with the minister, dealing with whatever, your husband or wife, or your kids. And what God showed me is a lot of times, more often than not, it's not them that is the problem. We're having a problem because we have a problem. And it's in here. That's why I have a problem with you because God's showing me there's a problem in me that I haven't dealt with. I don't like this about you because God is showing me something he doesn't like that's in me that he wants to get rid of. And it's all tied up, wrapped up, tangled up in my flesh. And it stinks and it's ugly. The way we talk to people, the way we react to people, and we don't see it because it's me and I'm the victim here. No, baby. A lot of times it's because there's something poisonous deadly, toxic in you. And you don't realize you are putting out things that make other people want to recoil and say, oh no, I can't be bothered with that. But let me tell you, once God starts showing you what is in there, whether it comes from bitterness whether it comes from unforgiveness, whether it comes from the fact that you have a superiority complex and you think you know more than what everybody else knows and you're going to set them straight, whether it's the fact that you're controlling and manipulative and it's my way or the highway, whether it's the fact that you have no diplomacy, you've never been taught diplomacy, and you don't know how to speak to people with respect and consideration and courtesy. There's a whole lot of reasons why life is harder than it needs to be. And nine times out of ten, if we refuse to do a self-assessment, what we're doing is we're refusing to grow. We're refusing to become all that God created us to be as individuals. So we have to be very, very careful not to be so quick to look at other people at the corner of our eye and decide that they're not worthy of our attention. They're not worthy of our friendship because I don't have time to waste with people that are messed up like you. And while you're thinking they're messed up, baby, people are looking at you like, what is their problem? Wow. 
So don't pass judgment. Don't hold grudges. And don't be so quick to point the finger. Mm -hmm. Because everything you do in life will be so much harder than it needs to be. Because everybody will get on your nerves. And everything will annoy you. And everything will frustrate you. And that will drive you up the wall and that will make you cry and you won't know what to do. You'll be at your wit's end at every day at every given moment because everything about life huh, is such a drama. You just can't take it. And what God is trying to show you is there are a whole lot of people out there that can't take you because you're so full of drama. You're so emotional. You're so high strung. You get upset. You ball people out. You snap at people. You tell them all. Some of you cuss them out. Whatever the case may be. And God is trying to say the problem lies in you. Once you take care of you, you don't have to worry about everybody else's problem. Take care of you. How's that? Then when you take care of you, you won't be so tired. You won't be so worn out dealing with this one. Dealing with that one. They won't get on your last two nerves. Because you won't have those nerves to be gotten on. Because God will have healed the thing that makes that get on your nerves so much. See, when God, when you invite God in to every fiber of your being to fix you. The potter wants to put you back together again. When you come to agreement with that. And say, Lord, put me back together. I really am a mess. And you start finding that people don't annoy you as much. Things go wrong. Things go bump in the night. You're not pulling your hair out at the roots and, ah, what am I going to do? No, you will find that you are in perfect peace. You might get a little annoyed, a little upset. But before you know it, after saying a prayer, Lord, take this annoyance out. Give me your peace. Calm me down. It's, it's over. It's a done deal. It's behind you now. Because you've learned to lean on him for every little thing. And see, the joy of the Lord is your strength. So you have to literally suck on his joy. Every second of every minute. Every minute of every hour. Every hour of every day. Because people are out there with their own issues. And yes, it's natural. They will get on your nerves. But they don't have to live on your nerves. Now, do they? Mm -hmm. You go to God and ask him to help you handle it. He's going to help you handle it. He's going to handle you. And he will remove the effect they have on you as well. And your life will be full of so much more peace, so much more calm and satisfaction and not so full of drama over here. I said drama over there and everywhere you turn, it's an upheaval. Yeah, you don't have to live your life walking, jumping, flinching, running, hiding, crying, screaming. <laughs> you don't have to do that because God will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on him not on you not on how you're being mistreated not on how you're being victimized not on how messed up they are and how jacked up he is and how that one wears your nerves no ask god to show you you when you find yourself getting annoyed okay lord if i'm part of the problem show me show me because I'm tired of feeling like this. I want to know what your real joy feels like. Mm -hmm. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. See, when the joy of the Lord is your strength, this is what happens. You have endurance. You have stamina. Things can go all over. I remember, okay, let me share this. I remember years ago, a woman was at the salon. And she misunderstood me. She bawled me out. Up one end, down the other. And I stood there and looked and I said, I'm not upset, Lord. This is a trip. 
I'm not hurting. I'm not angry. I'm not caught up in her frenzy. She misunderstood what I was trying to say and do. And I, all I had to say was, well, I love you. I know you're mad at me, but I love you. And I went inside. Calm, baby, calm. God had me. Now, that is not me. I'm very emotional by nature. My flesh. <laughs> you're talking high, strong, and emotional. Cry, baby. Emotional up. Heavils, that's me. But with God being in control, I am a totally different person. When God is totally in control, when I yield to him, all that ugly stuff in me just fades off in the wind, mm -hmm. along with the stink that goes with it. <laughs> anyway, don't be weary in well-doing, for in due season you will reap if you faint not. Here's another side to that coin. The more you fight to obey, the more you fight to respond according to God's word, according to God's righteousness and his character by the power of his Holy Spirit working in you when you're dealing with other people in love and kindness and mercy and in patience, you will find that life for you is so much easier. You will find that things go better. With Christ. You remember that song? Things go better with Coke. Oh, things go better with Christ, baby. I'm telling you, life is such a smooth ride. He's the shock absorber, y'all. Check it out. You remember those old commercials where they have the big car going down the street and the big bumps are going all over, the tires are bouncing everywhere, but the car is... That's the way it is walking with the Lord. You don't get worn out because the joy of the Lord is your strength. And guess what? Because he's our shock absorber, we don't have to feel everything that goes bump in the night or the day for that matter. Amen. Trust in the Lord. Lean on him. He's got you. He's a very present help in time of need. Lean on him. He can handle what you can. And he can help you through what you think you can't bear any more of. God bless you. And ask God again. Lean on him. Ask him to open your eyes in every situation that feels ugly, that feels painful and challenging. Ask him to open your eyes so you don't miss what he's trying to show you. Amen? All right. God bless you.